So I'm getting ready to paint things here and I started out by using some engine degreaser just to clean these things off from oil and grime from test firing and then I sandblasted the stuff that's going to get paint um, you can see I put some tape on this area, the lugs, and then I sandblasted the part that will be visible, that's the part I'll paint and I put some tape, masking tape on the rails because I didn't want to sandblast those I didn't bother sandblasting the hammer even though I'll paint the visible part there I sandblasted the trigger, I'm going to paint that black anyway so all the stuff that gets painted I sandblasted or actually glass bead blasted and interestingly titanium when you blast it it sparks so that was kind of fun Uh, was with the glass beads. I don't know if it would do that with sand or if that's just an artifact of using glass beads anyway. So, and I turned the pressure down on my compressor. I don't know exactly what I turned it down to, but quite a lot. Normally it's, I don't know, 90 or 120 psi. Turned it way down because I want less pressure. With the airbrush and I've got let's see dark earth or let's see yeah, uh, dark earth flat tan dark earth matte OD green and this is black from my last paint job so this one's gonna be camo though but I will do the trigger will be black I think maybe the barrel black just the, the barrel hood that you can see through the ejection port and then everything else camo I have no clue how it's going to turn out, I haven't done camo before and I've only done one paint job ever to, to begin with so let's start working on it and see how it'll go um, after sandblasting then I also clean parts um, with acetone as a final cleaning and I'll heat these up because the paint will dry quicker with heat I'll just use a heat gun and then I'll do the painting and then I'll bake it in the oven gotta wait 30 minutes between coats and I'm supposed to put on two coats so I'll put in one color paint a couple things wait a half hour do another coat. So that's kind of a pain in the neck. But oh well. Let's heat the parts up a little bit. Not that it matters because I'm supposed to wait 30 minutes. But. Still at least I can put a coat of paint on and then I set the part down so even though I've got to wait 30 minutes it'll dry quick and I can set the parts down do a little black and I'm not going to put much in here because I don't have much black to do That's just a tiny little bit, but that should be tons, and it shouldn't dry in here because there's very little air in here. So for 30 minutes, it should should be fine. All right, so pushing down turns the air on, and the further you pull back, the more paint comes out.
don't want to put it on super heavy. I don't want it to run. Probably good enough. I wonder if it'll balance. I'm going to lean it against something here so it doesn't tip over. Alright, so I want this paint job in general to be a little bit on the darker side instead of the larger, lighter side. So I'm going to lay down a base coat of the green and then we'll do the brown and the tan to make it camo. So I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's what I'm going to try. So we'll fill this thing up with the green and probably take a couple, couple refills since this the reservoir on this thing is so tiny all right I'm gonna take the heat gun heat this thing up so they'll dry really quick and then I can turn them over and paint the other side I won't be putting the Surefire into the oven. It's got a plastic cap on it. It's got some electronics in it. I didn't take it apart that much. I've got a little piece here that I took off, but that's it. All right, so. And whatever paint gets on these rails, it'll wear off eventually, so I'm not too worried about it. I think this is a better way to do it. So I painted these separately and then when I put them together they were kind of sticky and really hard to get the slide on there and kind of a pain in the neck and I got some fingerprints on it and I also painted a little bit and left the cap off of here and of course paint sloshed out of here and got on the frame which kind of messed up the paint a little bit made the finish imperfect and so I just cleaned all the paint off before you before you bake it 
the paint comes off really quickly and easily with um, with acetone. So I cleaned it off and I just assembled it and I'm going to try painting it assembled at least initially. I may do a little bit of touch up with it apart. I'm not sure. Or I may may just leave it this way. And uh, let's see if I get better results without getting paint in places where I don't want it to be. Another thing is, if you put the paint on too thick, it comes out glossy. So I need to go lighter. I need to put less paint on there. heavy there. Need to go just partial with the trigger here. And I got it, got it a little heavy in a few spots, and it just comes out glossy. And if I hit it again real lightly, the gloss goes away. It becomes matte. That looks pretty good. I'll flip it here and do one, do the other side, let it dry 30 minutes, come back and do one more coat, and really try hard not to have any thick spots there. To avoid the gloss. Alright, I think this is better than the first time. I didn't spill paint on it. I was lighter with the coats. I won't have the gummed up stuff. Getting this in was gummy. The slide stop, the slide was gummy. So I feel good about doing it this way. I think it's better. Alright, I got a few glossy spots, a little bit on the light, 
a little bit on the side, some down here, which means I put the paint on a little bit heavy. I think that's what that means. So, for those parts, I'm just going to cover those with the new colors, with the colors that's, that will make this camo in combination with the base coat. So I'll try to cover up those glossy spots with the next color, which is going to be matte dark earth. So let's see how this goes. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. My biggest goal here, I think, should be to go light and slow. I don't need to cover every glossy spot because I've got another color yet to go. If I cover some of the glossy spots and then cover more of them with the next color, that probably will work out okay. Yeah, this is cool. I think this is gonna it's gonna turn out nice. And when I first started painting with this, a couple spots, a couple of blobs spat out of the gun and hit right there. Maybe I'll see if I can cover those up with the next color. I'm not sure why that happened because I sprayed a test spot on a piece of wood over here. So we'll see if I can end up without spots on the gun, cover them up with the next color without creating more spots. Alright. Alright, looking pretty good. Actually, you know what, I wonder if when I bake this in the oven, I wonder if the gloss will go away. That'd be good because it's still glossy. Seems like there's nothing I can do about it. Alright, let me hit it with the heat gun, then I'll flip it over and do some more of the matte dark earth on the other side. All right.
so they don't all need to be oblong. They can be little spots or dots. All right, last color. Actually, I don't know how different it's going to be than this from this color. Let us see. Matte dark earth, flat tan dark earth. They don't seem too different. Not too different. So I feel like I covered up a little more green than I wanted to before. So I'm going to put a little bit more green back. And then something I read said, do a super light coat of your base coat over everything to help blend. I'm not sure I really need blending, but I think maybe I'll try that. Because I do want it to be a little darker than how it ended up here. So let's try that. And then I'll be about done. Parting thoughts. I'm happy I put the frame together and then painted it versus painting the parts separately. Although you can paint the parts separately, just make sure to tape over parts that you need to go together, especially if you're not going to bake them first because they end up gummy and it's hard to get them together and you get prints on things. It's just not the best idea. Also, I still need to paint the grip screws. I'll paint those black. Obviously, if you're going to do a camo paint job, you want the parts together so that the pattern blends across parts. If you make a mistake, don't hesitate to take acetone to it, wash the paint off, and do it again. It's very easy to fix things that way. No big deal. Don't hesitate to do that. I'm pretty pleased with this paint job, although I could see myself sandblasting it in the future and doing it over. But each time you do it, it gets a little bit easier, so that actually wouldn't be too tough. The most important takeaway, I think, is don't hesitate to do your own build. You can do it. You don't want to have regrets. So go for it.